Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC213, our class, our course on the end times. Uh, let's take a moment to pray and we'll get started. May I request somebody to please pray? Um, anyone can take the mic and pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we come before your throne, oh Lord Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time, oh Lord Father. Lord, as we're going to dive into our classes, oh Lord Father, we ask for your guidance, oh Lord Father. Help us uh, to learn, oh Lord Father, more about your word. Uh, give us your Holy Spirit as a guidance, oh Lord Father. We just submit everything into your hands, oh Lord Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. So the plan for today is, um, first, we will do a quick review of the whole course. Uh, I'll just go from start to finish quickly. And then um, we'll open up for questions. Any questions, any um, clarifications you have, you might want. So the main purpose of this course is to give us a, a good overview of the end times okay so in your minds you're clear if somebody asks you uh, can you tell me what the Bible says about the end times then starting from today like from where we are now as the church till new heavens and new earth you should be able to explain like give them an outline right so uh, th these are the things the main things that will happen you explain to them very clearly so if you're able to do that, and of course, if you're able to point to passages in the Bible that this is where it says, that's a good thing. Right? In our third year, we will get into more of book study, right? We have studied Daniel, study Revelation, more like a book study, go verse by verse. So the purpose in this course is to get an overview and, and then also the signs of the times. So they, if somebody asks you, uh, how close are we to the coming of the Lord? What are the signs that you can point to? Then you ha you can mention. You know these are the important signs that we are seeing. Uh, these were uh, mentioned in the Bible, or, or prophesied in the Bible, and that's why we are saying that we are very close to the end. Right? So we should be able to answer these two two questions mainly. What is the outline? What is the overview? What are the signs? To be able to add, point to chapter and verse. Okay. Now, in that process, of course, uh, we answered some other questions. Uh, you know, why do we say there's a pre-tribulation rapture of the church? Uh, why do we say, uh, you know, uh, that seven years of tribulation is in the future, and all those kinds of things? Okay. So let's just do a quick review of the notes and the content that we covered, and uh, we will uh, close with that. So we began in the introduction. You can follow with me if you have the notes. Um, basically telling us why, why is it important to study end times. Uh, we looked at several reasons uh, that God has uh, revealed this to us in his word. Uh, God has revealed it so that we could live carefully, watchfully, honorably before God, and uh, yeah, we can live uh, with hope, knowing there's a great future. Uh, we can um, also know that Christ is triumphant over everything. Uh, we will proclaim the gospel. We understand that's our final responsibility. And this message of prophecy is also to be preached. So people also need to be uh, to hear about prophetic scriptures. In, um, then we talked about our approach in studying the end times, literal, then figurative. Uh, we don't uh, engage in sen sensationalism, trying to cause fear and excitement. Suddenly, suddenly, <laughs> this news happened. That No, no, just uh, stay with the word of God. And also, we understand that uh, there are different positions. Different people have different uh, interpretations or positions and we respect them it's okay you, you can have that but we explain what our position is and why we take that position so uh 
we gave this outline, this little chart here on page 10. And this is the outline that you know you should be able to explain to people. Like this is a sequence of events, and you can turn to chapter and verse to explain that. Um, and then we also said, you know, when we are interpreting scripture, we interpreted it looking at both the old and the new testament, the full full Bible, use biblical typology. Uh, recognize different time frames, a near and far fulfillment. And uh, we, under we also recognize that our understanding is not perfect. I'm not saying this is perfect. No, this is the best, what to say, the best that we can share. It's possible we may be wrong, but best, the best of our understanding, our study in the scriptures, we are sharing this, okay? So, um, and there are some things we don't subscribe to. Uh, lesson number one, the Bible, a prophetic book. We said, you know, the Bible, there are so many prophecies that have already been fulfilled. Some prophecies have been given thousands of years in advance, and some prophecies are almost impossible to be fulfilled. But we can see that these prophecies have been fulfilled. Therefore, we can rely on what the Bible is saying about the time to come, right? So that's the conclusion we draw. And so we point to some prophecies that have been fulfilled, uh, some which are really amazing uh, in terms of their fulfillment, and uh, even concerning the prophecies of Christ, which almost seemed impossible, but they have been fulfilled. So we pointed to these, and then we said, look, we therefore can rely on Bible prophecy concerning the end times. Then we looked at the gospel passages, Matthew 24, uh, the parallel passage in Luke 21. We went through that passage because that's the passage where the Lord Jesus gives most amount of detail concerning the end times. All right? So Matthew 24, if somebody asks you about what did Jesus teach about end times, Matthew 24. Right, should go there. Parallel Luke 21. Any one of those passages. And then you explain, you know, what did Jesus say about the end times? You explain, you should be able to explain Matthew 24. Uh, it's broken in three parts. One, there is the signs before the great tribulation. Then there is the section that is about what happens during the great tribulation when the abomination of desolation, whom Daniel spoke about, comes. Then the third section is about how to live in view of the end time. So Matthew 24 is broken into three sections. So you explain it like that. And uh, uh, so we went through that. And some terms that are used about the end times, the last days, the latter days, and so on. And that... Um, uh, each of these terms has to be understood in the context in which it is used, right? Um, the same term could mean something different in different contexts. And so we've given all these scripture references on page 21. Lesson number two, uh, page 23, we said, okay, let's understand a little bit about the geography. So our focus is on the Middle East, right? So you need to... Okay, something about the Middle East, the two main rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, and the river Nile down in Egypt. Uh, but this is where things started. Uh, the Garden of Eden was here, and Abraham was called out of the earth of the Chaldees, somewhere near uh, modern day Iraq. And then he journeyed all the way over into um, the land of Canaan, which uh, is modern day consists mostly of modern day Israel. So we went there, we went through that, we gave a little I uh, mention, we just made a mention that Daniel had prophesied about several coming world empires. We will study these in detail next year. Uh, but we made a mention of these and how the role they play in Bible prophecy. We also made a mention of Islam. Islam is very important because most of the nations around Israel are Muslim nations. And that's the reason for the conflict today. 
the big reason why there is conflict, uh, you know, Islam and the Jew, uh, the, the Arabs and the Jews. So we mentioned that, and if you look at the map, and you, you can see so many nations all around that are uh, Arab nations. We also made mention of the European Union because it overlays or overlaps with what was known as a former Roman Empire. So this is the Roman Empire as it extended in uh, in its uh, largest extent. And you can see that European Union overlays or overlaps with many of these places. So uh, that's important from Daniel's prophecy. Uh, this is part of part of the European Union. And um, then we also made mention of Russia, because Russia in, uh, is, uh, you know, is, is indirectly the tribes in Russia mentioned there in Ezekiel 38, which we looked at. Persia, Ethiopia, uh, Gomer, parts of uh, eastern Germany, Tugurma, Turkey. Uh, so these, these nations are mentioned, the tribes of these nations are mentioned. And kings from the east, uh, which we, we saw mentioned later on in Revelation, um, referring, so we are just thinking that kings from the east were the big superpowers from the east in, after Russia, China, yeah, Russia and China. So, uh, and uh, there will be lots of other nations as well who get involved. Megiddo, where the, the valley of Jezreel, where the Battle of Armageddon will be fought. Page 30, we have a map of that. Uh, we see where it is uh, located, north of Israel, uh, towards the northern part of Israel. And uh, how the lineup of uh, nations, the movement of nations towards um, the Valley of Jezreel or the Battle of Armageddon would happen. There's a little map there. And it's just for us to uh, keep these things in mind. Then he focuses on Israel, just a little bit of the history of Israel. Right? Again, we're not getting into all the details, but just some key things. First of all, the land was promised to Abraham and his descendants. So God promised that land. So that's why it becomes very important, that region from the uh, river Euphrates to the river Nile. So God promised that. Uh, I, will, uh, I will give this land to you. Right? Uh, he promises land. So... Um, Israel eventually came and settled in that land, and uh, a lot of things happened uh, when they had kings, and they were conquered, but they were restored, they were dispersed, and then eventually Israel was formed as a nation in 1948. Uh, so that's very significant. A little bit of that uh, understanding of history, and uh, the Six-Day War that was fought in 1967, is also important because that's the time Israel recaptured Jerusalem. And to understand that there have been a lot of efforts to bring peace. So, in terms of history, the regathering of Israel was prophesied almost 2,500 years ago, uh, which was all fulfilled. Um, and uh, we understand the conflict that's going on now. Uh, with Israel and its neighbors, page 39, uh, the Philistines, Palestinians, Gaza, and West Bank. So those are the areas that we need to be familiar about, the Palestinian territories, uh, which, which therefore, which is a lot of conflict. And um, the Temple Mount is important. Um, going back in time, that's where Abraham brought Isaac to be sacrificed, King David purchased it, King Solomon built the temple on it, it was rebuilt, Herod enlarged it, uh, the temple was destroyed, and then the Arabs built on top of it around 86, 85, 685 to 691. So that's where things stand today. But it, it has given a lot of, it's been become a cause for a lot of problems. What's important is that for the last almost 30 years, Israel has been ready 
to rebuild a temple. They've been ready. Right? So they've been making their efforts to be ready. So we just have to watch and see how things will happen. And uh, also make mention about the Jewish settlements uh, where Israel is building their building on the land that they uh, that the Palestinians claim as their own, and so this is again giving rise to conflict. Right. So what the Bible does foretell about the future of Israel, uh, which we also saw, was Jerusalem will be a trouble spot. There will be a peace treaty for seven years, which will be broken in the middle of the seven years. There will be the tribulation happening. The second half of the tribulation is referred to as a great tribulation. There's a battle of Armageddon coming. And during the millennium, Israel would be the center of worship, or Jerusalem would be the center of worship. Uh, these are things the Bible foretells. Right? So lesson number four, page 53. Uh, we we did a uh, full overview of the events. And along that, we answered several questions. So we did um, an overview of things. And so we said the rapture of the church. Why do we say uh, the fact that the word rapture comes from the Latin translation of the Bible? Uh, and so it is there, but in, in, in Latin. And... Uh, what, how, how exactly this rapture will take place, uh, what will happen, what will believers do seven years in heaven, what, what are some of the things we know, uh, we listed them out, uh, and we said, we gave reasons why we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Right? Uh, so we looked at some scripture about um, the departure must happen before the man of sin is revealed, uh, the promise to the church in Thessalonians, the promise to the church in uh, Philadelphia, the church in Revelation, uh, the typology used in Matthew 24, uh, the chronology of the book of Revelation. We take it as it is and we see the sequence of events. Daniel's 70th week refers to Israel, not the church. The church is taken out of the way. And then we answered some questions in relation to the rapture of the church. Right. So after that, we went into the book of Revelation and we just gave a chronological overview of the book of Revelation. Right. So we started from chapter 1, Revelation 1 to 22, just looking at the sequence of things. We see the raptured church worshipping in heaven, uh, the, the Antichrist being revealed, Revelation 6, uh, Peace Treaty, Temple, uh, the Seven Seals beginning to uh, open, 144,000 Jews, Revelation 7, the Tribulation Martyrs, Revelation 8, there is a lot of prayer happening from the earth, uh, then the Seven Trumpets, uh, Revelation 9, people are still hard hearted. Revelation 10 is a parenthetical chapter where John is told to eat this book. Um, and then the next half of the tribulation, three and a half years, when the Antichrist breaks a uh, peace treaty. So Revelation 11 to 22, uh, sorry, 11 to 19 is the second half of the tribulation. So keep that in mind. So that also must be very clear. Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 is the middle of the tribulation. Then from there on, the second half. Um, so the midpoint of the tribulation, we see about two witnesses, who, and uh, we su suggested who those two witnesses could be. Revelation 12, the woman, the man child, and the dragon. Uh, Revelation 13, the rule of the Antichrist. Revelation, so beast, uh, the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. Um, then Revelation um, 13 also talks about the global financial system and the mark of the beast. Uh, there's another parenthetical chapter in Revelation 14 where there are angels making the announcements. 
Uh, Revelation 15 and 16 continues with the um, seven bowls of judgment. Revelation 17 is a world religious system that collapses. Revelation 18, the global financial system collapses. Um, that leads into the Battle of Armageddon when the uh, when Jerusalem is surrounded by armies coming in from all over the world. The way it will happen is Russia will invade Israel from the north. They will be pushed back and then there will be all the kings of the east marching in, the nations gathering in for the final conflict, which is the Battle of Armageddon. We see the second coming of Christ, Revelation 19. And with that, everything is ended. Tribulation saints are raised. And then there is the millennium, which is the thousand-year reign of Jesus. Satan is bound uh, for a thousand years. We see a little bit about the life in the millennium, how it will be. The millennium temple, worship will happen in the, in the millennium temple. At the end of the millennium, there is the great white throne judgment. And then everything is renovated by fire. And there are new heavens and a new earth, Revelation 21 and 22. Okay, So that's a quick overview of things. The last part, chapter 5, are what are some of the signs of the times? So we went through some of these signs, and I'll quickly mention them. Israel being formed as a nation. One generation will see these things. Jerusalem will become an epicenter of conflict, which we are seeing happen in our day and time. The Temple Mount, we look and see, are they ready to rebuild? Because the, te the temple has to be rebuilt. A ten-nation uh, alignment, where ten leaders will then platform the Antichrist. They'll help bring him to power. The possibility of a global currency system and identification system, both these are possible today very easily. How Russia, China, Iran, and Turkey are all aligning themselves. Uh, we're seeing that. And uh, how they're all kind of working together. Uh, number seven, Peace talks and the plan to divide the land, that seems to be the only way forward. Uh, everybody is proposing that, but that will be the reason for the final conflict. The church coming to maturity, which is a wonderful sign, because Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. The gospel reaching all the nations. We are very close. Uh, bring the gospel to all peoples. We are also seeing increased persecution. There is deception and false spirituality. There's explosion of travel and knowledge that's happening in our day and time. The other other conditions like the global political condition, fear, hate, despair, earthquakes and other weather conditions plagues and epidemics uh, and the moral condition of man. So all of these things are indicators of where we would, where we are. All these things, the last few things we said, have been happening, but they are escalating. They're getting worse in our day and time. Okay? So we've done quick review. Now please ask questions. Any questions? So let me ask you a question. Suppose somebody says, well, you know, about Antichrist sitting in the temple, that is not a literal temple. It's a spiritual temple. And maybe that spiritual temple is the church. 
and uh, so he comes and he troubles the church because church is the temple of God and uh, maybe this some man some religious leader antichrist how will you respond to that so they're saying temple not a literal temple second temple could be the church and uh, could be some very big religious leader like very maybe spiritual leader he takes control and he sits in the i mean becomes head of the church and he tells people to worship him and all that how will be, what will we respond suppose that that kind of teaching you hear or interpretation what how will you respond to that seems convincing no anybody online welcome to respond so first first point they're saying temple is not a literal temple but a spiritual temple so think of scriptures that tell us that uh, the temple is a literal temple a physical temple so second thessalonians chapter 2 what Jesus also said, Daniel chapter 24, and also Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. So, when Jesus said in Daniel, uh, Matthew 24, he said, When you see the abomination of desolation, and he didn't say about the church. Let me just turn to the exact verse. Right. Verse 15. Therefore, when you see Daniel, uh, sorry, Matthew 24, 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. So he's not referring to he didn't, he didn't say standing in the church or standing. You know, standing in the holy place, that the the context is very you know understand. Yeah, he's referring to a physical temple. Then you look at even what Paul wrote, Second Thessalonians two, and then we also look at Revelation eleven one. So if you look at what Paul wrote, Second Thessalonians two. Verse 4, right? Oh, yeah, he's talking about the man of sin. Second Thessalonians 2 4, he says, Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Right? So he's, he's where is he? He's sitting like God in the temple of God. So this physical temple, he's sitting. He didn't say he will sit in the church or you know, sit in the temple of God. Right? So it's a physical temple. Of course, uh, we can also look at Daniel. Daniel is very clear. Daniel says the offerings will uh, he will they will begin to do, resume offerings day and morning and evening. So in Daniel's prophecy, it's very clear that there is a physical temple. They are making sacrifices morning and evening. And then he will stop those sacrifices. So he's not talking about, you know, 
something spiritual is very clear the morning and evening they're offering sacrifices that will be happening and then this man will stop it yeah. and then also revelation 11 uh, he clearly states they are going to be so it says i was revelation 11 1 onwards the angel is saying rise and measure the temple of god the altar and those who worship there. So what you're going to measure? Measure the church. No. This is literal. Measure the temple and the altar. Very clearly he's saying there is the altar. That is the place where sacrifices are being made. So Revelation 1, 11, 1. Very clear. There is a physical temple. There's an altar. You measure it right so we can actually point to four different passages which are saying that yeah you know, there has to be a physical term not a spiritual this is a literal term right and then for the second part we say look nowhere does it mention church it is the temple the holy place the altar talking about physical sacrifices so it's not the church it's the actual temple, Jewish temple. So it, you cannot, you know, just because the church is the temple of God, we can't replace it here. It's talking very clear. And also we can say, when um, in Daniel chapter 7, when Gabriel spoke to Daniel, sorry, Daniel 9, when Gabriel spoke to Daniel, he said, I'm... And he gave him that 490 years that we, you know, we, we, we looked at. Daniel 9, 24 to 27. Um, he gave that 490 year period. He clearly told them that this is concerning you, your people, your holy city, your people and your holy city. Daniel 9, 24. That means. It, this this whole every what whatever whatever he said here this four hundred ninety years, it's about your people and your holy city. Not about the church. Your people and your holy city, Jerusalem. And in that context, he says in verse twenty seven, Daniel nine twenty seven, he will confirm a count with many with many for one week. In the middle of the week, he will bring an end to sacrifice and offering. So he's going to stop the sacrifice. He's going to stop the offering. Whom is he talking about? Reference to your people and your holy city, not the church. So this offering, the sacrifice that he's going to bring an end to, very clearly mentioned, it's about Israel, not the church. Okay? So we can, you know, we can respond to those kinds of teachings or those kinds of ideas but scripture and say look this is what the scripture says um that's why really suppose somebody says when a believer dies Spirit, soul, and body go to heaven. So why? Because uh, uh, he, that moment itself, um, they are resurrected, they go to heaven. Because Jesus already said, because I live, you will live. So when a believer dies, that moment itself, Spirit, soul, and body, he goes to heaven. His body, he gets a resurrected body and he goes to heaven. What will you say? So, rapture is happening. Every time a believer dies, he's resurrected, he goes to heaven. How you will refute that or respond to that? Every time, like when a believer dies, suppose I'm just saying, okay, I'm not saying this is true, but I'm saying, suppose you hear some teaching 
uh, when a believer dies now because jesus christ already died and rose again and went to heaven so from now on from that time on whenever a believer dies immediately he goes to heaven spirit soul and body he gets a new body and he goes to heaven what chapter and verse how will you respond oh use the mic please when a believer dies his soul will go like his spirit will go to will go to heaven but he will not receive a glorified body because uh, in philippians chapter 3 uh, paul writes about we getting a glorified body and also in uh, john 14 jesus tells that he will come and he will take us where he is so we can use these two scriptures mm. to tell that we, uh, when a believer dies he will not go to heaven with his body and soul mm. but only his spirit will go to him okay so give me some convincing chapter and verse that says well he is going to receive his resurrected body afterwards yeah i see in chat Philipp philippians 3 21 that's correct uh, yeah which you referred to that when christ appears then you know we are going to receive that but what else some very convincing chapter and verse very important passage exactly first the Thessalonians 4 18 13 to 18 very important passage mm. it's saying when Christ comes right when he comes then we will receive you know we will all be raised and we will receive glorified bodies very very important passage first Thessalonians 4 13 to 18 similarly if, uh, there is Parallel passage, First Corinthians 15. Uh, First Corinthians 15, I think it's 48 to 58, yeah, 50 to 58. First Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. Again, it's parallel to First Thessalonians 4. Paul is describing what will happen, right? So that's very important. These passages very clearly say when jesus returns then we are going to receive glorified bodies it's not when as soon as we die as soon as we die our bodies will decay but our spirit and soul go to be with jesus but when the lord returns we call it the secret coming that's when first thessalonians chapter 4 13 to 18 and first corinthians 15 uh, 50 to 58 take place. Right? We receive glorified bodies. Okay. So, suppose somebody says, I'm just saying example. Don't say I said it. I'm just saying example. <laughs> Actually, Putin is the Antichrist. He's already on the earth. How will you respond? Or they could mention another re leader. I'm just giving saying. So and so is the Antichrist. Some leader, maybe president of this country or that country, whatever or some big religious leader. This man is the Antichrist. How will you respond to it? They could pick any name, right? And say, so-and-so is the Antichrist.
Yeah, correct. So the Antichrist, the man of sin, will not be revealed until the church is taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That also you must say, good. <laughs> right? It's very clear that he will not be made known until the church is taken out of the way. So don't try to guess this person, that person. Don't waste your time. <laughs> if you will not know, he will not be revealed until the church is taken out of the way. Okay, that's that's our response. So, if someone says the church is going from bad to worse, huh? Is going church is going from bad to worse. Church is becoming even worse. So many denominations, so many things are happening, so many confusions. It is becoming worse. And with the end times, the church will become even more worse. What will you say? Yeah. So, for Jesus to come, He's coming for a glorious church. He's coming for a mature church, a church that, you know, like Ephesians, so Ephesians 4, Ephesians 5. A church that is mature, that is growing up in all things to be like Him. A church that is a glorious church. He's coming back for that kind of a church. So, the church is not going worse. The church is getting more glorious. The reason He has put apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers in the church is to mature the church, to make it more like Jesus. Yes? We may have different uh, labels. We may have different uh, expressions. You know how how service may be conducted. This all that, those things. But well, that's not the important thing. The important thing is we all believe the same thing about the Son of God. We are coming to the unity, the faith of the knowledge of the Son of God. How you sing, how you, which language you sing, what clothes you wear. That is not. That doesn't matter. We must come into the unity of the faith in the knowledge of the Son of God. That is the important. That is what God is worth. Bring us to that place. And making us all become more and more like Jesus. That is what He's working. Right? So it doesn't matter whether you sit and sing or stand and sing, kneel and sing. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, how you, what your expression is, which language, uh, what style of music. Uh, those things don't matter. You give yourself some, some name, some denomination, it doesn't matter. He's bringing us to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to be like Jesus. Yeah. He's coming back for a glorious church. So, there may be problems, there may be differences, all that, but the church is not getting worse, it's getting more glorious. So look at that. See what God is doing in the church. Okay. Yeah. So nowadays, a lot of people are talking about artificial intelligence. What Bible sign is this? Artificial intelligence fulfilling. Ah, correct. Daniel twelve verse four. There will people will travel flow and to and fro, and knowledge will increase. So what artificial intelligence is doing is just uh, like an explosion of knowledge. And it is making more information available to us. There was internet, 
but this is taking many levels higher. You can ask any question, it will give you an answer within seconds. So knowledge is available to everybody. You ask any question, you get the answer very quickly. So even artificial intelligence that being available to people, it's a fulfillment of Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, where Daniel, Angel Gabriel told Daniel, Daniel, in the latter days, people will travel to and fro and knowledge will increase. See, it's happening. Never before. Never before such so much knowledge available to people just by so easy. You don't even have to go to library. Just ask a question, you'll get your answer. Knowledge has increased so much. Right? It's a sign of end time prophecy. Yeah. yeah. Good. Any other questions? I'm asking you all questions. You ask questions. <laughs> Online students, any questions? So, Francis. Uh, uh, so like uh, regarding like uh, uh, like Antichrist will create a one world like is that uh, my question is like is this any connection between bit currency like Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency anything like as in the mm. all the world like this is the trend mm. like there is like more value mm. but it's a one coin one currency any connection in that mm. um it is uh, I, I wouldn't answer like a hundred percent but I say it is possible right the reason I'm saying it's not hundred percent is because this whole cryptocurrency is like sometimes up sometimes down you know, so many crashes have happened. Uh, so many, you know, fraud and cheating has happened. So that's why people are very, on one hand, people are excited. One hand, people are very scared. Right? But cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, is like an unregulated market, meaning it's outside this current banking system. Our banking system is very regulated. Governments are controlling, governments are monitoring. This whole cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, which is completely digital, it is unregulated. Nobody is able to control. Nobody is able to monitor. On one hand, yeah, it, it gives access to things to anybody. You know, anyone can set up an account, start, you know, doing, involving in it. But that there's been a lot of you know ups and downs in this. So we have to wait and see. You know, it could emerge into something, or it might go away and something else might come. We don't know. But you just sort of wait and see uh, where this goes. So that's why I say it's possible. It's possible. We're not sure. Okay. Okay. So we'll close for, with this. Now, uh, what is left is your assessment, one assessment. I will put it up. Uh, I'll work on it, I think, by next week. And I'll send one email. And you can uh, do your assessment. You'll get your marks on that. And with that, the uh, course is closed. So we have finished early. Uh, but make use of your time. Maybe just review the notes and study it. So, okay, let's close. So there will be no more classes. Uh, only left thing left is your assessment, which I, when I put it up, I'll send an email. Uh, most likely, I'll plan to do it by next Tuesday. So then you will have plenty of time to slowly do it. <laughs> do your course. Let's close. Somebody can pray and close, please. Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord. Once again, we come to your presence, Lord, as what we have discussed about all things, Father. Father, teach us deeply about your words, Lord Jesus, so we could apply and we could learn about end times more and more, Lord Jesus. Thank you for teaching us.
so pass of all thank you in jesus name i pray amen amen okay thank you everyone for being part of the course um join us next next semester next year third year we'll do a course on daniel and revelation we'll get into uh, a book study of daniel and revelation okay thank you god bless bye